in trouble. We've seen this one before. Is he flagging? Is he stick save? This time he has the exhaust. It might be enough. Adam in trouble. First blood gets the one for one though. Cut it to flag it. I'm tipping. 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 I'm
The problem that I really find myself is that G2 is a different beast in playoffs, right? If Winter is anything to go by, they're going to have random stuff prepped that Mad Lions may not know about. And to me, that's always going to be a very, very scary thing. It's something to look forward to indeed, but it also brings a question in regards to what we've been seeing from G2 throughout the regular split, whether we'll actually get to see that today. Because when we're looking at MDK particularly, they have that fire to succeed. You mentioned it yourself. They had an incredible lower bracket run last time around. They have that. Their entire goal is to lift a trophy, to take down G2. It's a rivalry that they're looking forward to. And particularly for this setup, it's going to be all eyes on Elioya and Supa because the interview we've had with them right after their lock in here for playoffs, they were just the two happiest people and they were supportive of each other. We can see that both off the server, but also in game. Well, I'm going to be honest. I think this is only a rivalry. If you ask MDK, the biggest <laughs> so far, G2 has been stomping them, uh, you know, Lost this fanatic. year. And I think more than anything, I would look at this as an opportunity for them to really show that they can actually match G2 and step it up because winning today would be huge for them. And I think Ilyoya has been great uh, the past couple of weeks. I think Super has been great. And some of these guys are really going to have to perform as individuals for this to work. Yeah, it's a matter of pride, pun intended, because yeah, if they lose, then it's just going to suck. They're going to have to go through this whole lower bracket thing again. And don't get me wrong, whilst they looked great in Winda, sometimes miracles don't repeat themselves twice, right? And I think the fact of the matter is a lot of the league has leveled up compared to Winda moving into spring. I know there's always discussions about level of play. So Elyoya and Super, are going to have to be the, the main guys that really do step it up. Elio has been very supportive, like we've mentioned, uh, of Super. And I think the entire of Mad Lions as a whole definitely need to try and make sure that as a team, they're locked into a particular identity and they're ready for, you know, whatever G2 has to throw at them today. Yeah, and we're looking at Elio and Super on the side of MDK, but then you're looking at G2 and you have Hansama and Yike. And their synergy has also been going really well. And Hansama, when you're looking at some of the best, if not the best AD carry in the league, he is the player that comes to mind. Yeah, I think this is going to be the ultimate test for somebody like Super to really show up and prove himself because Hans Sama falls in the category of probably the most aggressive AD carry we have in Europe, at least looking back at the past uh, year historically. And if you can go up against him, dominate him and win, you know, with your aggressive jungler through bot, that really showcases that you're here, you know, not just to, to participate, but actually to win. Yeah, you know, it's really funny because when we talk about mid laners, we normally talk about four new players coming in. It's about hopping over the line of Caps and Humanoid, but I feel like for bot lane, it's actually Han Sama, right? That's the standard that a lot of ADs are held to. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk from Super Zen, very, very confident talk. Now it's about actually proving it in the 2v2. And that's exactly what we're going to be looking forward to because we're ready to head into the first game of the series. G2 going up against Mad Lions Koi. Let's head over to our casters. Thank you very much, Ginny. Yeah, bot lane. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of places we can go, and the draft is probably going to tell us more than anything about where we should be focusing. But these are bot lanes that kill each other yep. a lot. A lot of 2v2 kills in lane. And it's going to be very different to our previous series where nobody killed anybody. Hopefully. And then the game ended, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> Hopefully. That would be a pretty impressive caster curse if I somehow stopped both G2 and Mad Lions Koi from fighting people, <laughs> which I don't think has happened in a single game they have played. Look, I'm just saying, you want to give me omnipotence? Great. I would prefer if these two teams fight. We'll find out. Players taking to the stage now. Cheers to the fans. G2, Winter Champs. A little bit of a downturn in the final week. A lot of loosey-goosey early games. MDK, here it on the desk, finally coming alive as our coaches take the stage. Now that Dylan Falco. But I want a bloodbath. I wanted to come back to what we got in winter. I want that same finals, Barry. 2v2 kills, as you say, in the bot lane. Everyone was going hard. Mir was bringing out some crazy picks. Like, I want to see both these teams at peak performance because it feels like G2 on a bit of a slump. Yep. Madeline's call, he's starting to come out of a bit of a slump, but still, Still and, a lot to and, kind of improve on. Yeah, you know, momentum is a real thing. I don't know if you preserve it week to week, but in this match of the week presented by Uber Eats, I hope that we get a little more spice, a little bit more flair, because it's a brand new patch. There is room to experiment. There is room to try stuff. Of course, maybe teams are reticent in this first best of three to show their hand, to show everything that they've been cooking, but we've been scrolling through solo queue, and there are some spicy picks getting tried, getting attempted. Just sprinkled. Just Please. sprinkled into some of the games. Mostly it's the vanilla stuff, but every once in a while, they pull out something crazy, that licorice. Yeah, 
You get the, the yeah. licorice? The li You've been in Berlin too long. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, I, licorice is important because it's like one of those things where you either love it or you hate it. And I feel like that's how a lot of people are going to feel about some of these more unique picks. Uh, we do have a client restart, so we will be a little bit delayed getting to pick some bands here. As, oh, you there's a counting? big counting exercise. He can't get past four. That's a little concerning. That is tough. The funk music will continue to play, regardless of the state of the client. But I think, again, coming into this, I want to see Oyoya really getting the ball rolling in the early stages. I think he's been fantastic. Like, when I think of Mad Lions Koi, have you ever read um, The Discworld? I think of Oyoya as the greater two. And then there's the four elephants that ride on his back are the rest of Mad Lions Koi. And then they hold up the disc that is the MDK fan base. And I think it's basically Oyoya will sacrifice himself for the good of the four elephants. And he is on a journey to create the Mad Lions Koi. And I'm okay, gonna, I, just I, have, I, I just have a question. Okay, go, go, go. Is it an LPL thing that you guys keep talking about elephants? Because Asterix was the same yesterday in a much weirder context, in a much bolder way than I think with your Discworld reference. I'm just trying to understand. Is, is this an LPL thing? Is this something we like need to learn from? I'm a master of this guy, so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> No, I want to really see this like, right. come to fruition. And I think El has been great at being the backbone for this squad and then Alvaro helping him out in that one. Okay, you could have gone with like Atlas. You could have gone with Greek mythology, like not nah, Discworld. More relatable. More people yeah. will know it. Terry Pratchett is incredible. Terry Pratchett. Him. Sir Terry Pratchett. True. So, like, give him the respect. All right. Rail does make it to the picks and bands. Nautilus actually the one band away alongside the Vi. So most of the reliable point and click lockdown options have just been taken completely out of this draft. Rel still remains a flex on this patch. It's next patch where jungle gets gutted. These ear band, not surprising. I think Caps is definitely one of the players that could make that comeback performance happen when he got his hands on the Azir. Dawson Sam CG2 leave him in the side lane and just off to his own devices. So he could come back later and be a big old strong bird that uh. could whack people, but. Yeah, Ari, and immediately the Jinx, so Supa definitely going to be getting the hyper carry treatment. It's just a case of, I believe they're going to need something a little bit more aggressive for Oyoya here, like Ari into a Zinzo, into something along these lines, could work out really well for Oyoya to provide that mid jungle that can then support Supa and Alvaro in the bottom lane. Yeah. So scaling, I mean, the second we see Jinx, it's like hard scaling, right? Ooh, the Lucian now coming in, and the Nami pairing. Not surprising in the context of perceived power picks, but not a historically super successful champion. Uh, Noah did win on it yesterday, but I think that was a little bit more about his mid laner than the bottom lane, and I will reserve too much judgment here as I am a notorious <laughs> uh, Lucian Nami hater. But obviously- yeah, you're a resident. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm the, I'm I'm the sure. whatever the opposite of the merchant is, I'm that. I'm the guy at parliament trying to get this thing banned. You know, <laughs> no more selling Lucian Nami to the people. It's causing problems. Yes. Tic-tac-toe. <laughs> <laughs> Madlands Koi. Rakan could be taken. I was actually curious to see exactly what the plan was. I think I can understand where the Rakan comes from. I think it's decent into, hey, we can try and lock up. It makes it very easy to try and make plays around the map with Alvaro and Oyoye being able to work in tandem. But I think putting the presence onto getting a stronger pick for Oyoye could have been a bit more worthwhile because I think you ban away the Zinze, maybe even something like a Lee Sin ban here as well. And it's just like, okay, well, what's really the aggressive picks you can get in the jungle? Could end up falling back to something like the uh, the Diego, if you really want to. But I think that's where it's not as strong in the yeah. setup. I think you want something where Oyoi can provide a little bit of frontline, but also still have a lot of opportunities to play make, even if he falls a little bit behind. Yeah, it's kind of tricky for the side of Mad Lions Core. You have a lot of really powerful individual components. I don't feel like the, everything you want for a Jinx, all the needs Jinx has has been satisfied yet. You don't really have that beefy frontline for her to play behind yet. And it's tricky because some of this has to come from Mirwin, some of this has to come from Elioia. So neither player is really going to be able to grab entirely what they want. Despite the composition thus far, they are banning away the Twisted Fate, trying to take some of the high prio picks here for the top side of the map. And no jungle bans. Oh, there's the Lee Sin, as you talked about. Double mid ban on the opposite side, trying to really set this Ari up. I'm happy, though, to take the... Okay, <laughs> what the hell? Okay. He knew, he knew. You see that grin. Look at that smug face. Uh, so I'm going to be very honest. I didn't prep Rengar coming no. in today. <laughs> Hilariously, I accidentally opened a window with Rengar, but it was completely unintentional. Um, so you do have the power. I do <laughs> have the power. I manifested that. Or El Yoya manifested it for both of us. That's Rengar. I'm, we're going to figure out how it works together, dear audience. Of course, we know mechanically basically how it works. How it works in pro play remains a slightly different question. Is Rek'Sai is now going to be here. Is it Rengar top? 
that's the one I wasn't sure on. I think Rek'Sai can do relatively well into it. But uh, the last time I remember seeing Rengar okay. Pro play was SOO Fame as a counter to the Evelyn at yeah. Worlds Finals in, what was it, 20, 20, whatever, yeah. Um, but I think it's it's super interesting to see it. Like, I think it definitely gives uh, an opportunity. You can go for a tank build. We've seen, obviously, the one-shot builds that come out, but ah. it's going to be for Oyoya. <laughs> Someone has to pay the price. When you pick weird stuff, someone has to pick something boring. And in this case, it is Mirwin. Has got the Udyr into the Rek'Sai. So kind of a sustain off on the top side of the map. Roaming active mid laners early on. Bot lane aggressive, potentially in favor of G2, but it is the Rel who could be that big playmaking catalyst, the big AOE CC. I'm not gonna lie, it's all eyes on the Rengar. That is the champion that we need to track. That is the champion we're gonna keep looking for. We get into these mid-game situations. Side lanes. Rengar has historically been a death threat way back in the day. It was Rengar when you had Rumble. And if you ever wandered in ever to a side lane to contest any champion, Rengar would be on top of you in half a second and you would be taken out. Very similar to what a TF provides in a lot of ways. But a champion that since that point in time has obviously received a, a, essentially a complete rework and like 500 different nerfs and buffs. So it might be a little bit different. Yeah, I'm just flicking through a uh, solo queue match history for Rengar. The only person apart from a lot of uh, one tricks with questionable names is YSKM has been playing a little bit, but he's obviously a top laner. <laughs> so not really going to be... But he does go for a Sunder Sky, Ravenous Hydra, Iceborne, Gauntlet build. Okay. Which could work, I think, in competitive play, where you're not completely going to get one shot. You're still going to have at least a good amount of damage and can follow up. But I, I thought I'd see this more with, say, like an Orianna. That used to be a combo where, like, Ori into the Rengar. But I think definitely sets up for, hey, oh, you can try and play for picks off of Frescoe. But this is definitely going to be a pick-centric build to come through. Yep. Here we are, match of the week. Presented by Uber Eats. Delivered, rather. G2 and MDK. Okay. Time to see what the, the problem with... Okay, so here's the thing. The one thing I hate about spicy jungle picks is mostly what they do for the first six minutes is farm their jungle. Yeah. So we, like, we're here waiting, bated breath, trying to see what the Rengar is going to do. And he's mostly going to farm. But he does have first strike. Of course, the last Rengar in LEC was in 2021 summer by Bwipo, who's currently in the finals for LCS. Um, don't know if that's a positive sign or not for the Rengar. I'm going to take it as one. We're just going to get into the world of, like, omens. How we feel about it. What does everything mean? <laughs> We'll pull out the tarot cards. Yeah, I was going to say, we just talked about tarot cards. We just cards talked about some way in, yeah. yes. <laughs> Opportunity for reflection. Oh, yeah, is he the magician? Is he the fool? Gonna have to see. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> we're getting hit. Rapid fire with Rengar stats. Whippo uh, played the last five LEC Rengar jungle games. It's just all Whippo. Oh, one, it's jungle, one jungle, four, four top. top. Okay. If you don't remember that, he just... Level 2 cheese you in one shot. You more or less made the lane unplayable. But while we wait for the Rengar to get involved in the action, a lot of these other matchups we're a little bit more familiar with. See what Hansa and Mickey can do early to get things to shift in their favor. Broken Blade, of course. This is the Rek'Sai that still has incredible, incredible healing. You build tanky early on. Mirwin going to try to outmatch that with some of the natural utility of Udyr. This Castle Frescali already trading blows. All these lanes getting aggressive. I like it. I think it's good from G2 to try and go for it, though, because if you can actually invade and get on top of Rengar before he really gets into a position where he can hit level 6, start to interact with the lanes, it's probably your best bet. If you go to Mena CC, that Yike can try and provide there as well. The problem is with the... I thought I'd actually see Rengar start bot side and go into top because it feels like the lane that you can probably get the most control over. But uh, at the moment, Super and Alvaro off of the early stages have actually got a good amount of push in this bot side. So at the moment, you're sitting all right for Elioia as he makes his way into the bot side. Mm -hmm. Fury fully stacked. It's the empowered ability on the next camp right before it fades away. So well practiced on the early clear, clearly. As Broken Blade doing what he can. Of course, Mirwin, as he burns through more and more mana in this lane, Broken Blade will eventually out sustain. We'll see if there's an early back for something like a tier just to kind of try to counteract some of that. Ooh, look at the auto spacing. Look at the tunneling and the oh, sustain. Oh, oh. Broken Blade. Both. 
bars are full though, which means both of them are going to be heal up a good amount. Like you double slap the W for Mirin, you're going to be in a good spot. So yeah. I think this is where, again, it's going to be a case of getting a lot of sustain. But the fact that Mirin didn't really get to crash the wave is actually a big win for BB. He can slow stack the wave and match any of that early pressure for Mirin, because oftentimes we do see Udyrs resetting, going for an early cloth armor in a lot of these AD matchups, but not going to be able to do so quite yet. So at the moment, going to be relatively okay. And again, BB, nearly back to full health. Just took off of the strength of this pick, whereas Mirin already had to burn through two pots and still struggling. Yeah, this is what's so infuriating about the champion, right? Is you just can't really bully it out of lane unless you can all in it. It's just so difficult to do early on. Caps, excellent flip back. But here comes Elioia, first blood already there. Yike, ready to cover. But if Elioia gets into that brunch, Caps is as good as dead. Taking their time on this one. Elioia trying to walk away. TP now coming back. First bull is going to land. He's only got two, now three stacks on the Fury. Elioia will at least walk away with his life. Fruskawi's TP stopping anything else coming out from G2. This Broken Blade now returns. To punish Mirwan just a little bit. No TP from either top laner. God, lane. Wait, it's Pool Party Rek'Sai? I thought this skin was banned in pro play. It's not banned in pro play. <laughs> it's allowed. He's going to ride the little jet ski. They see her. Cops, great flick back onto Frescawi, though. Frescawi trying to play aggressive on the wave state, but thinking Oyoi was coming in, but Cops able to get the damage before it comes through. Did mean he was a little bit low on the mana, but just when it came to trying to finish off El Yoy on the backside, but still pushing El Yoy back. Big win for G2 off the initial play. Small advantages obviously start to add up very quickly. You can see on the top side matchup, Broken Boy just continues to out-sustain. Bot lane, not really a massive advantage for G2, but if they can keep the pressure, it's going to be more important. And again, not getting that early kill on the mid lane for El Yoy, it does hurt a bit. Obviously, want the Bone Tooth necklace stacks, get all that extra AD stacking early on, and it is a serrated Dirk. An item that was nerfed on this patch, but is obviously still a fantastic first buy. Nicky's starting to roam up towards mid lane, though, as Yike is going for this invade. So G2 yep. trying to just delay the level 6 as much as possible spike from Aoyoya. He may have to cover here, just making sure there's no funny business that can happen for Caps as he starts to push this wave in. The Caps looking great on the Talia so far. The flick pack, though, doesn't quite line up with the Unraveled Earth, so the stun doesn't come through. Timing a little bit off. Aoyoya ready to set up. Caps has to be careful if they were to lose wall. Instant leap over from the Rangar. That's the fall up and power bullet to make sure that he is locked down. Caps can flick back and flash. They can't follow. Caps is going to survive. Ayoya and Alvaro not convinced that they could just follow over the wall. They didn't know where Yike was. They didn't know where Mickey was. So they just decided to back away instead. Really well played by Caps, but great setup from MDK to punish Caps trying to get that vision down. Yeah, and you can see how annoying Rangar could be around those mid lane brushes. How easy it is to find that access, that leap forward and the instant route. But again, Caps, you know, a little bit more item, a little bit more gold for either of those champions. Caps is probably dead, but just don't quite have enough to finish the kill. Now they know they've got a bit of an advantage on the bottom side, and they're starting to push in. Prescawi, though, first on the row means G2 are forced to back away. They cannot secure the Gromp or really control the vision there and try, which is so crucial for the bottom side of the map. Yeah, has to be careful about wandering into the Rangar. They get the crash on bot side, though, which is really what they wanted to. They cause MDK to invest in resource onto this bot side. As Yike, this is not where you want to be. Yike about to take a lot of damage here. Fourth ability, a little bit extra work to flash out the heal. G2 are using a lot of sums. MDK, Kreskawi now on the chase. This is going to be big for the Ari. Instantly over the wall, now chasing down Yike. We'll get the reset on the Mickey X. The charm connecting as well. Kreskawi doing so much work. And now it's Hansama who's going to be in trouble trying to get one kill back. The knockup is there. The exhaust is there on the Alvaro. And it's not going to result in the turret return kill. And at the beginning, it certainly looked well for G2. They pull for Skelly out of mid, which means Caps gets back onto the wave. He's able to shove that one in. But they end up sticking around too long. Yike tries to threaten onto the mid lane. And that's where MDK are able to turn that one around. And now Ayoya getting rolling on both on the Rengar and with this area as well. But you can see Caps is trying to push in mid lane. Ayoya is already in great position. Alvaro way more aggressive on the play since he's got the Rakan. And then you've just got for Skelly first move in mid lane. And does a great job of coming over the wall here. G2 just don't respect Frescoe in the room. And this is the power of the Ari in the early mid game. Yes, the Talia has the flick back. Yes, she can disrupt a lot of what Ari wants to do. But if she's not there, Ari just gets to run rampant in those skirmishes. You can see the smile on Elia's face. Frustration for Yike. Golf claps. The MDK coaching staff is now a pretty advantageous state for MDK. Again, the gold lead is not massive. Lucian still out farming the Jinx early on. Big deficit for Supa, 48 to 72, but that's really the strong point that G2 have. Not a lot else on the map other than the 1v1 topside. But this is all, for all intents and purposes, 
for, or not free gold for Ayoya, but the idea is he hasn't hit six. He's only just crested over. So getting this active on the Rengar in the early stages is massive because now he has act access to the ultimate. He can start to play even more heavily around for Skelly. Caps doesn't have flash available. Ults for for Skelly and Ayoya towards mid. Kill Caps, put that pressure into the bottom side of the map. It becomes quite easy now to start playing around the map or learn this mid lane, especially as both objectives are up on the map, you can start to turn this into major leads that MDK are just picking up incrementally as the game goes on. Yeah, and it's really terrifying to enter into a mid game where a Rakan is allowed to roam around the map, where you have a Rengar and an Ari that are in similar states. It makes it so difficult for a lot of these more vulnerable champions to play the game at all. Caps' life is a nightmare. He's only got one minefield and he needs to stop three champions from dashing on top of him. Caps has played super defensive mid because he's aware of this combo. So it's only opened up for Skelly and Oyoi to start to lean into this bottom side. So, like, trying to protect his bottom lane here as Hansama gets the wave shoved out. But Oyoi is starting to sneak in onto this bot side. Broken Blade. Committing the ultimate here on Amir 1. Will he find the kill? Immediate stun fall from Amir 1. Good. Gets the ulti. Might just be forced out of lane at this stage. Hansama rooted up. That's going to be big from Supa. Supa now needs to back away, but the gravity storm is there. The colon coming out and down goes Supa. Oh, he's here on the backside immediately. Wants to leave on Hansama. The dash back to safety is just enough. Ticking the health bar, blinking, but he manages to stay alive. But here comes Frescawi. The dash in the spear rush. No! Hansama! The sidestep! The last little bit of healing and the thumbs up. Frescawi knows. He just got outplayed. Yike managing to get into that bot lane before. Everything the rocket. down. Rocket's gone. It's a swing and a miss. We'll lose out on the wave state here unless they want to try and stick around. Maybe there is a world as they can imagine that most of MDK have gone. So going to pick up that wave state, but massive, massive play from G2 biting back against MDK before they can set up the play themselves. Yeah, fantastic turn. Yike spending a ton of time. If that had fizzled, it would have been disastrous. But you can see here, he's just so patient. And the thing is as well, like you're moving into this position where as long as you can kill Supa before this play happens, Chances are you're going to be able to at least go for one for one. And on the opposite side of the map as well, Caps is moving up towards that top side as well. So got the kill onto Udyr. So able to get control on both sides of the equation from G2. Very small timing window to play around, but they do it great. And then Hansama able to escape away on the backside as well was massive in that play. I mean, G2 know Hansama should be dead. You can see it in Ramah's face. <laughs> Their AD yeah. carry absolutely should have died. And frankly, that play was very close to not working at all. And it's only because the auto attack is what causes the initial CC from Yike that Super Splash ends up not being effective allowing the gravity storm that was that was a play where every single little mechanical moment mattered and just barely turning out in favor of g2 mdk control of the bot side jungle mickey knock up there follow up there that's one dead nami but again the heal <laughs> no Shogi, he's, he's, dead. Dead. he's dead he's dead it'll take a second the tidal wave comes out but press now on a killing spree this Ari looking to take over the map and now hansama yes the the wave I don't think to he's going to be able to that lucky just this time around. Him. They know they're going before the wave even comes in. Dash to safety. Alvaro is probably going to give his life here. The heal again! How many times this game are people going to walk away with less than 100 HP? This is insane. It had to be made up for the last series. Both teams going all out, trying desperately to pick up any win they can. And we're getting that kill on both hands on the Mickey X. Now more gold onto Supa as well. Would have been great to probably have a little bit of that gold of course to Supa, but uh, you only got to have a great time with the position that he's in, even having that ultimate now back up and available. Oh, two, zero, so you've got to three. keep your eyes on mid as well. Frescoe going to be in trouble as well. Hovering on this mid side. Caps not going to be able to look for the flick back though as Frescoe is able to clear the wave. And Hansam and Caps are going to have to be so careful and diligent around when Elioia has access to the ultimate because he's just a couple hundred gold away from Profane Hydra. And the amount of burst potential you have with this item is, is truly disgusting. MDK playing well, but again, when we take stock of everything that has happened, the gold is still so incredibly close. You can see it. Caps and Frescawi within touching distance. 3 1 2 versus the 2 0 0. It's still a 15 gold lead for Caps. It's bouncing back and forth depending on where you look. This is a tense game. But it's where, for MDK, you need to try and play away from Caps. Even though Caps is even with Frescawi, the amount of control Caps can provide with the Unraveled Earth for a Leaping Rengar, for a Ari that wants to try and dash in with the charm, even. For Rakan is going to be really, really tough. So for MDK, they need to keep the pace of this game up. And that's why, again, you're seeing them trying to keep control and push G2 out of their own jungle. Get the vision control that they need and make sure that they're able to hover El Yoy in the darkness and look for consistent picks. Yike going to try and keep track of where El Yoy is so we can match a lot of those single lane states where they might be pushing in, where El Yoy might be able to get a foothold. A lot to keep track of. Caps for now just solo starting the grubs. Okay, a little bit of a leash. Maybe trying to stack tier. I think it works, but hey. 
certainly an option. I, yeah, I think it was uh, just trying to threaten on towards top side and maybe see if you could pull. Cause a lot of the times when you're on this red side, you just plan to ward over the back line and won't yep. really know who's actually started this up. So if you have caps, they might have assumed Yike was on the top side, so maybe trying to bait out some of the ideas here from uh, MDK as to where G2 are going to put their presence on the map. Okay, G2, three members here. Broken Blade. Looks like he's losing out in the one-on-one, -on -one, but... Haha, -ha, a tunnel has appeared, and now he dashes out to safety, gets his Fury back, and just goes right back under the ground. Irritating top lane battle is Elioya. Caps, can he play this out? Nice! Forces the flash from Elioya, so clean, but flash for flash. You would expect to favor Mad Lion's Koi in the long run. Dash forward, Alvaro. Retreating to Elioya, both sides again, just hoping, looking for these angles to find a pick. Maybe give them a bigger advantage. The gold's only 300 between them. As you say, the flash for flash, honestly, Caps not having flash leaves them way more vulnerable for the next little bit, like a minute and a half until that next dragon. MDK can actually play off of mid lane pressure with Frescoe and also Elioya's ultimate coming back up to try and make a play on that mid lane. And I think that's probably where MDK are going to try and find their window into, hey, we can take Dragon off of chunking caps out or even killing caps on mid wave. So this is where I think G2 going to have to be hyper aware of that and trying to establish some sort of vision there. Alvaro alt quickness, W forward, instantly gets in. The root is there. G2 disrespecting. Caught napping on the bottom side. Mickey, the flash forward for Zuba's big go. He's taking tower aggro. Yike gets one back. Oh, yo, yo, on the retreat. Yike stepping forward, he has red buff, he should just be able to finish the kill. Step backwards, shut down there for Yike, the Rel. No business killing this many champions! But MDK opened up to get the opportunity, and now G2 are quick to punish. A disastrous start turned back in their favor, as the final kill goes through in favor of Caps. Big turnaround from Yike. I don't know if, what G2 if they were trying to bait, whatever they were doing, it did not work out in the bot lane. And immediately, MDK able to hop in. Great engage from Alvaro here. And as you say, just complete disrespect. Super spotted them. They should have just backed it up, but end up going down. And I really don't think it was a bait. I mean, Yike was so far away from the play, but just about manages to get in time. Manages to get the extra terror shot oh, onto Yoi with the ramp damage. And then Caps having that shove in mid, coming down to finish off Alvaro as well. G2 scrambling, but just about make the play positive for themselves. Cap's ability to roam means he can also pick up a kill here too. Not all of the gold going into Yike is a big deal. You don't really need a very fed rel in this game, but it does certainly help. Is now G2 trying to leverage their strength in the mid lane. There's one and a half item Lucian with an Imperial Mandate is always going to be a big threat. G2 feeling a lot more confident. Still less than a thousand gold, but MDK have to be careful making these plays. Vision in the brush means Elioya isn't going to have a creative angle to get in. We'll step forward to try to clear that ward out. Still, I don't think you're really in a position here as MDK if it's an even footing to take this fight. You need to try and find that pick beforehand, but with uh, Caps being able to find that play on bot side, not being able to try and find that wave state in mid lane for Elioya and Fresco to get the pick onto Caps with no flash, G2 are happy to push in and just brute force their way in knowing that with no pick, they're just stronger. Yeah. Quick wander in, get the objective, one-to-one -one in Drake's now. Seven on a goal between them, again, incredibly close. The tower, the biggest advantage that G2 have right now, breaking open mid lane. Makes the rest of the map that much easier, but putting caps into the side lane is always concerning. A lot of members of G2 down here to try and defend. They know the Mad Lion's Koi will probably try and make a play towards caps again. No flash for him, so that's kind of the port of call that MDK want to try and go for, so G2 defending well. And Supe to clear a mid wave, he's gonna reset as well, pick up, imagine, close to a second item. So overall, I think you're in a relatively fine spot for, honestly, on both sides. I think for G2, it's a case of can we now enable Caps a little bit more in a side lane where he can actually be a threat. But you have to make sure you're getting midway pushed in and establishing vision on Caps out of the map. So he's not just falling prey to Alioya as he starts to come in or a uh, setup from Frescoe. So definitely going to be interesting to see how this mid game is played up. Because if you find that pick, you're in a great Aww. spot. Mirror one flick back, not quite going to connect with the tower, likely to fall here. Caps focusing on the tower instead of the kill. There's no, there's not really a lot there, and thus Mirror one over commits, but Yike is here now. Mirror one turns back, it could cost him. Another tower down for G2. Again, slowly chipping away at the side of MDK, slowly building a goal lead. Frescali going to respond with the tower of his own on the bottom side. We'll take him a moment. All of MDK there to cover if anyone on G2 approaches, but they're already on the top side of the map, playing for the objective that's up.
And that's where I think it's actually an advantageous trade for G2 to go for this. Yes, you trade tower for tower, you think, hey, it's an even gold state, but you have a Talia that's going to get way more value by extending on that top lane. And as well, you already got the mid lane tower down, so you can push mid into play on towards top tier too. And it makes it very difficult for Madeline's Koi to try and play against, excuse me, play against that with the way that the map is positioned at the moment. So as long as G2 can play off of mid into top and play off of those two lanes, I think they're in a good spot with just BB clearing out waves on the bot side. I think they're in a great spot. Yeah, they, again, these slow incremental advantages. is 1k gold lead now. Likely the Herald will knock down another tower, put things even further in the favor of G2. It's on MDK to look for these picks, to so look for these angles. Tantama just continues to step forward and chip away at El Yoya's health bar. That's big. Of course, the Empowered Roar does heal back a lot of that initial damage. And I think if you're super, you're kind of sweating, because this is when Lucian feels incredibly strong, and you're often being left alone mid lane to catch these waves. If he finds an angle to attack you, uh, there's not really a lot of counterplay. Especially with the exhaust, even just the reduction in movement speed is going to be super nice, but topside, Caps knows he's in a little bit of dangerous spots out of Yoya, but all you're trying to do here is G2 is just keep these towers off your way, or off your, or sorry, keep these waves off your towers. Because if you can prevent Freskawi from being able to shove in topside, you can actually get control mid with Rel being there. But MTK with Ayoya uh, and Alvaro just hovering in these bushes, they're doing a good job of disconnecting G2 from each other. Bit of poke. Tidal wave now coming in. Doesn't look like it's going to hit anybody. G2 just really determined to shut this Rangar down, willing to burn so many resources. Calling coming through. Ayoya with nowhere to go. So much of the potential gone, but Mickey now been cut out the rocket for reset. Alvaro pulled away. Sidestep is clean. Now trying to quick dash out of safety. Fresh Cali dashing to try to give a support and angle to get away. The wall now coming down as well. Dash back to safety. Dash again. Clean from Alvaro thus far. Nice heal to get them away. Good patience from MDK to survive as well as they did. One for one in the end. Oh, yo-yo for Mickey. On the bot side, BB. This is just going to be a wet noodle fight, but I think the big, the big play... Stop taking us here, observers. No one is going to die. Nothing matters. <laughs> But look how often he can go over the wall, Draco. <laughs> he can go both ways. Where the jet ski at? That's my question. <laughs> I miss the jet ski. Um, but I think on the, the outcome of all these places, yep. again, it's kind of G2 being able to find moments to punish MDK as they're starting to just go that little bit too far forward, right? Uh, yes, you have to invest flash and stuff like that, but being able to get the speed up from Mickey, being able to then land the stun on towards El Yoya, you're kind of committed to these plays with the way that the MDK are positioned on the map. Yeah. And it's if you're able to find those moments for G2 where, yes, you have to invest a lot, but you can find the pick, it's great. But now it's on MDK to try and find that tip for tat. You've already Certainly. paid your investment as G2 to get the flash on a yike. Now you got to see if you can try and find some answer for MDK. But with Alvaro having to flash away from that play, with Oyoi having to try and flash away from that play, it's really difficult to try and abuse the summoner spells that were used by G2 in that last one. And also, I think it's a matter of every time that G2 see the Rangar on the map, they get so much freedom to do what they want, because they're ahead in a lot of these individual lanes. But as long as the Rangar hovers in fog, he's a threat. But I wouldn't be surprised if every time G2 spot Elio out, they just try to dive on the Rangar. The same way that you would, like, collapse on someone with a TP, I feel like you can collapse on the Rangar in the same way and just try to limit that, you know, increased movement speed, ability to appear on the flank. MDK, though, trying to force the fight around the objective. Six seconds till Mountain. It's going to be BB, though, who's going to do a great job of spotting out with this Rengar race. Rek'Sai, perfect against the Rengar. Even oh if he's invisible, God. you're still going to be able to spot him out in MDK. <laughs> they're going to try and set up now at the objective. Red oh. in the mid lane. Knock up there, Fresh Fresh Gally, over the song. wall. He's about to get spotted on Vision if he steps too far forward. He's respecting the potential for a brush to be there, or for the ward to be in the brush. The Herald are about to charge. Pressure in favor of G2. MDK need to be the ones that make a decision here. They can't risk the 50-50 because they're already losing something in mid. Who's going to get it? It's gonna be the Rangar, Alvaro now trying to follow up with the Vine, does a nice knock up, but the immediate stop coming in. Yike not gonna let that engage on the backside happen. The Rek'Sai unkillable! He's got so much armor, and here comes Caps. Oh, yo, yo, waiting for the angle, trying to find it, but just jumps into the waiting exhaust of Hansama. It's one sleepy kitty. Mad Lions, Koi, torn to pieces in the exchange. And in the mid lane, the tower is taken. And you've got that charge onto the next one as well. Actually, it's gonna be two towers. It might go down, Mirwin. With the ultimus on the ore, or about the ore, should be able to take it down, but no, Terra falls. And G2, they're gonna turn towards Baron as well. A massive swing for G2. Game deciding fight. If they manage to secure this Baron, it might just be game over. Mad Lions Koi risked a lot. They bet a lot when they stuck around to contest that objective with the Herald getting dropped in the mid lane. And this time that coin came up tails. They did not find the advantage. Alvaro will spot this one out, but too late. A miracle gleaming quill. A jinx. Ro oh my. 
Hansama. I don't know if it was presence of mind or pure luck, but steps far enough forward that it's not going to be a problem. Broken Blade is still in a wet noodle fight. But now with a Baron buff. <laughs> still just hanging out in his little... The secret tunnel is... His secret tunnel is, he's got little tubes. He's having a good time. I missed the jet ski, Rob. I don't th I think it's gone. I think <laughs> when, they, I think when they reworked the alt, they, they got rid of the jet ski. <laughs> but here, Frescavi tries to make the play happen, but he can't really get access onto anyone. Great uh, unraveled earth from Caps as well to keep Frescavi out of the play. But again, even though Aoi is not visible, he's still pinging every which way that he's walking, thanks to Rexai every time she's tunneled. And Caps getting access to Frescavi means that G2 just gets to deal with Mirren, who doesn't really get to really get it involved too much in the play. And they can chase down each member of MDK as they start to roll through. And I think the big struggle here is that, like, you look at Rek'Sai jumping into the back line, hitting Supa, building full tank and functioning better as an assassin than Rengar is. Because Rengar's just so squishy, he's so vulnerable. And it's very often why we don't see things like the Zed or whatever in pro play or the Talons is because it's so telegraphed. And when all five players are coordinated, it's so much easier to deal with. And you can see in that fight, Caps and Ansama just free to lay down so much damage. Siege now on the bottom side. There's not really great wave clear from Alliance Koi. Mirwin, obviously, with Cryo Phoenix. Can do a little bit of work, but there's already a tower taken down mid, courtesy of Shelly. And Broken Blade, very tough to kill. But there's nothing you can do. MDK, you, you want to try and play for these picks. You want to try and play out the lanes in a position where you can actually get control there's, of the map. But there's no brushes there's just on the there face. Yet. They have but, no way to get Rengar to leap other than ulting. But how do you even clear waves? Because as long as BB is threatening Supa, you're out. From Alvaro, Alvaro wants to get something. Frescawi now stepping forward, but Yike with the counter engage. Shut down under the Lucian is big. MDK have they found that single angle. Mirwin still stepping forward, trying to zone caps out of the fight. Unstoppable now is Broken Blade going back to safety, hitting Mirwin. One for one thus far. Yike getting rooted up. MDK have to be careful here. If they lose this fight, they lose the game. Said just trying to push G2 back. Broken Blade incredibly tanky. That healing is disgusting. 341 per proc there. Zellyoya just trying to maybe cut mid-wave. G2 going to settle for two inhibitors and back off. Good pick onto Hansama, stopping what could have been an inevitable end, but they only buy themselves a bit more time and still lose two inhibitors in the process. Yeah, Alvaro tried his damnedest to get something there, and they do get the pick, Aww. but Caps is still too big. Zellyoya knocked back, forced to flash out. Solid from Caps, doesn't quite hit the flick back, or it would have been a kill, but getting that sum is big. And they still got Baron. It's a minute to the next objective. It's not going to be Soul. G2 might be slowed down a little bit here, but with double inhibitors, they can really just play topside. And if MDK try to go for that Drake, they can threaten to end. I don't even yeah, exactly. I don't even know if he cares G2 to go for Dragon. I think he just go for top tower. But Alvaro hero play to try and get the pick onto Hansama, and it does work out. But the problem is Caps just so damn fed and so well protected on this back line. Yike and Mickey helping him out. You can see BB causing so much disruption into the MDK back line, and then just gets the ult head onto Mirwin with his safety net still secured. And I think the big thing is, BB is so strong right now, and Supa doesn't really have armor pen, right? You cannot kill him. He is healing so much more than the effective damage you're doing, unless they actually focus Broken Blade. He gets to dip in, do a bit of damage, knock somebody up, leave, come back full health again. It's not Warmox. You don't have to wait a second. You just get it immediately. It's so powerful in this context when MDK are a little bit behind, when they don't have all these items completed, when they can't just burst this Rek'Sai down, he gets to just run rampant in these fights. And even if the Lucian dies, you can see there, it just gives so much space for Caps to still deal all the necessary damage. TP from BB into this top side. G2 really want to try and finish it out. Frescavi chunked as well. MDK just have to give this up. And again, as I said, I don't think they care about the Dragon. It's just that we have wave push. We have way more damage than MDK do right now. Let's just close this one out cleanly. Yeah, Supa. The Q does connect. Broken Blade can ult onto the Jinx. Alvaro again, fishing for the angle off to the side. This time the Tidal Wave is there. Elio trying to find someone to ult, but he's already forced to back away. He's got more time. But again, who are you going to hit? Who who matters right now? All of G2 are a threat. The Nexus in their sights. Broken Blade overstepping on the tunnel for a moment. The flash forward, looking to lock down the Jinx. The flick back is clean. Caps on a rampage. There is no space left on the map for Supa to play. All of MDK getting slaughtered. A beautiful shattering strike to stun two. Mirwin slowly but surely getting cut down. Charm there to try and lock Broken Blade up with the healing. He just won't die. Mad Lions Koi running out of hope here in game one. This should just be the end, but 
Alvaro respawns, potentially a last ditch effort to hold. The flick back again coming in from Cavs, Broken Blade, half health again. G2 gonna end it here. They take a little bit more time, they add a little bit of insult to injury, but game one belongs to them. Clean in the execution. NDK tried to find something a little bit spicy and it came back to bite them. They just couldn't quite get the setup that they needed to try and play around the mid jungle to lean that in towards pressure elsewhere. And G2, once it got to that point, just had a stronger team fight. They were able to just pay for objective setup and just find no real way for MDK to get back into the game. Yeah, and you can see MDK were close to getting a lot of the plays that they wanted, but that punish on bot side just felt backbreaking. Where they finally catch G2, but it doesn't really work. But here, Rob, I have to, I have to derail us because oh. you see this little guy right here. <laughs> this is the Kit Kat Poro. He's hiding around the studio today, and as a game of Easter egg hunt, you can like, retweet, and reply with the number of times it's appeared on air to at Kit Kat's gaming posts on X, and you can win a bundle of treats. Count, pause, scrub through the YouTube bot, keep your eyes peeled. We'll be right back after the break, maybe with more Kit Kat Poro, maybe not. Who knows? Peel those eyes. Red Bull gives you wings.